Look, we all became web developers because of one reason, and that's to make money. Let's be honest about that. But to make money with web development, you probably have to create an SaaS, a software as in service. To create something like that and to actually make money of that, it has to be a good functioning website which you can monetize and make money from. Now to create a good website functionally, performance wise and everything like that, you have to have a good tech stack in the background. So what I'll do in this video is cover the perfect tech stack for your next project to make the $1 million which you always dreamed about. So now let's roll the video and let's go. Now to get started, we always have to have a programming language. Now the web builds on JavaScript, it's just normal. Of course, there are more languages like PHP, Rust, and they all work, but at the end of the day, JavaScript is the OG. The nice thing with JavaScript is actually that web browsers understand JavaScript and you can create interactive experiences. Now the thing with JavaScript is it does not have any types. This is not nice. So what I would encourage you to do is first of all, learn JavaScript, the basics so that you can actually write JavaScript. And then once you actually understand it and can use it, I would highly encourage you to go to TypeScript. TypeScript at the end of the day is JavaScript. It compiles to JavaScript, but it has the benefit that it uses types. And types are actually quite important once your project becomes quite big. Now, the next thing which we need is a library. Now, you can build projects with JavaScript. It works. It's cool. It does its job. But honestly, it's still quite hard. What I would encourage you to do is actually adopt React as a library. Now, React will make your life very, very easy when creating interactive experiences, so to manipulate the DOM because it offers a virtual DOM, it offers JSX, I love JSX, and also hooks. So we have the use state hook or the use effect hook or the use ref hook, which are quite cool when you build applications because they just make your life so much easier. So I would do that and then actually continue to learn a framework. Now for frameworks, I would choose two things. That's either Next.js or Remix. Now, why do I choose two? So if you haven't seen my video where I compared Next.js with Remix, the gist of that is when I create content-driven websites, like for example, janmarshall.com, my personal website, which is quite content-driven, I always choose Next.js because of features like caching, which are baked in. For anything which is highly interactive and dashboard heavy, I use Remix. Now, if you want to learn more, check out the video, but that's the gist of that. Also, it's important to mention many people confuse React actually as a framework. No, it's not. React is the library and then Next.js or Remix or whatever there is on the market is the framework which builds on the library. The framework brings more features which builds on the core infrastructure. So that means, for example, Next.js brings its own router. It gives you the ability to load data, to mutate data with server actions and everything like that. Also, for example, server-side rendering, which is quite important. So now we have talked about about that. The next thing which we need is styling. Now for styling, you only have one option and that's CSS. But of course you could use in framework and that's what I do. I use Tailwind CSS. It builds on CSS. You just write it a bit differently. It makes your life way easier. You can actually prototype way faster and you don't have to write this generic CSS as you know it. So I would highly encourage you to incorporate actual Tailwind CSS. And then I would also actually incorporate Chat Scene UI, which is a component library. It's A, accessible and B, also styled, which is great. And it just looks beautiful. It's very easy to use. Just NPX install what you need and use it. Also, the nice thing, Chat Scene actually offers you a color theme palette. And this color theme palette actually also creates an own design system. And this, again, creates consistency in your project, which is nice for the visitor, which visits your website. So now we have talked about the front end. The next thing we have to talk about is the back end, which is very, very important. It has to work good. Now, the first thing we have to talk about is again, of course, the framework. Now, most people would now use Express or something like, I don't know, Django or something like that. I personally just use again, Next.js and Remix. Remix and Next.js are both full stack frameworks, which means you can use them on the front end, but also on the back end. And that's what I do. I don't create any separate back end. I don't need that. I just use what I have and that's fine for me. The next thing we have to talk about is the database. The database is very, very important. Why is it important? Well, it's quite hard to migrate from a database to another database. I personally did it with giantmarshall.com. Thankfully, my schema was quite simple, so it was easy, but still migrating a database is not hard. So it's very important that you make the correct choice. Now, there are a lot of options on the market, no SQL or SQL, which means, for example, MongoDB for no SQL or for SQL, you have SQL Lite, you have Postgres and you have MySQL. Now, I personally always lean to Postgres and then as a service or as a provider, 
I use Superbase. So Superbase is actually quite affordable, quite easy to use, has a great UI, has a great UX, and they recently came out of beta and they're now GA. So that's what I do. I always use Postgres for all my projects. And then I also use for all my projects actually Superbase. Now, the next thing we have to talk about is authentication. Authentication is very, very important. And it's important that you do it good. Now, there are a few options again. Either A, you do open source with Next off, or you do not open source with a service provider, like for example, Kind. For me personally, I already created a video once about that, so open source or a service-based off provider. So when I create a website, which is not B2B, so when I create something B2C, where not every user is a paid user, I always lean to next off, so an open source alternative. But when I create a B2B website, I always choose a service-based authentication provider because I will need more features like SSO or multi-factor off, which are not that simple to create with next off. So again, either next off or kind depending on the project. Now, the next thing which we have to talk about is emails. Emails are very important, both transactional and marketing. And for that, I use Resend. Resend is quite new on the market. Nevertheless, it works great. It has a great package for React. And at the end of the day, the emails get delivered, which is good. And it's quite affordable. That's why I use Resend. It has a good team, good docs, and it just works. The next thing which we have to talk about is the most important thing, and that's payments. You, of course, want to have payments, and you have to somehow actually get the payments. You want to somehow get the money. Now, there are a few options, again, on the market, and I will actually, again, take two. I would either use Stripe, or I would actually use um, Lemon Squeezy. Now, the difference between the two is actually that Stripe is just your normal payment processor, and Lemon Squeezy is a merchant of record. Now, I won't go into the difference between like a merchant of record and just a standard uh, payment processor, but I personally use for all my projects Stripe. I don't need Lemon Squeezy, but some people on Twitter will tell you that you need an MOR. Now, again, inform yourself, go to your tax advisor. I won't actually try to explain it to you. But again, the two options are either Stripe or Lemon Squeezy, in my opinion. Now, the last thing which I want to talk about for the backend is file hosting. Now, most of my projects rely on file hosting. And what I use is AWS S3, so the bucket. It's quite good. It's quite affordable. It's not that easy to actually incorporate in your project but once it works it actually works so that's good so now we have talked about the front end and back end and now we have to talk about hosting now for hosting i use two actual options and that's vercel and fly.io so for anything which is front end optimized or front end focused i just used vercel it's quite affordable i pay something like 20 bucks a month i'm not sure and it just works quite good. For anything which is highly interactive, has a lot of load, has a lot of, I guess, users, I use Fly.io. Why is it? Well, quite easy, it's cost. Vercel gets very, very expensive once you scale a bit, and I just want to pay the fee which Vercel imposes to me, so I use Fly.io. It's cheap, it's in VPS, so it's in serverful deployment. It's not that easy to get running, but once it runs, it works, and that's good. Let's now also talk about two extra things which I use, and that's first of all Sentry, and then that's also post hoc I use post hoc for session replays. I see how the users actually interact with my website, what works, what does not work. And I just use Sentry to actually see my error. So when a user encounters an error, I'll get an actual, I guess, pop-up from Sentry and see, hey, I have a problem with this code. I will have to fix that. So this is the tech stack which I use for my applications, which you probably also should start using for yours. And now I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked, I hope you subscribed. I hope you, I will see you on the next video and now, Bye.